the whole of book of James but as for today I will lay down the background of the book of James and then I will do chapter 1 of the book of James and then I will try to explain the different types of James and who has written the book of James and for what reason and for what purpose and why did he do, uh, write this book and when did he write this book and then next week we shall continue on the same chapter 2, chapter 3 so that at least with the Christians we may get to get the deeper information that is in this book of James because this is a, a book full of wisdom but rather it, it gives us with the Christians the directions of life on how we should uh, live as Christians. Uh, the book of James mm, is an amazing book whereby when you read the when you try to get and navigate through the New Testament, it kind it carries the wisdom or it is the the proverb of the New Testament. Because when when we read the proverb of the new the Old Testament, it carries the wisdom, the whole wisdom that we require to navigate through or to propel through the life. But in, even in the New Testament. It is here now the book of James now to give us the wisdom we now the believers and the Christians that will help us to go through and even be able to live as per the way Christ uh, desired us to to live a number of people they, they tend to to think that uh, uh, the book of James was just written so that to fulfill or just to because he was inspired by God to write this book just to give the knowledge of what happened but the book of James is different the book of James is different because uh, to a number of things it does not show uh, things about Jesus but it shows how a, a Christian should live uh, so that they may be able to navigate through so I will begin by building my background uh, my background concerning the book of James the book of James was written by James himself the book of James was written by James himself but there were four more James but I will come to explain later and in this book it it dealt on practical aspect and not theoretical aspect when i mean the practical aspect it deals how uh, a christians uh, should live even that time this book was written to the jews the 12 the 12 tribes that were scattered in different areas uh, so that they may live according to the word of god and the way Christ would desire, desire led them to live and it tends to stick to a matter of practical and the matter of, uh, of faith whereby now we the Christian we should live a practical life and uh, uh, a life full of faith it shows us how to live a life during the time of perseverance and even the time when we don't know or now to submit to God, how we can submit to God, still this book of James, it shows us that how to live authentically and wisely uh, with Christ Jesus, the way he wants us to live. And in this book of James still, uh, it does not uh, look upon to some aspect like baptism, it does not look upon the aspect like uh, Holy Communion. Most uh, of us, we know very well, every book, uh, it connects us either uh, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the baptism of water or the, the Holy Communion that brings us closer to Christ Jesus. But this book, uh, book of James, the opposite is true. It does not talk anything concerning the Holy Spirit. It does not talk anything concerning the Holy Communion. 
the only thing that this guy called James E. E. Andrews, it is matters of how a Christian or the lifestyle of a Christian. Why did I choose this book first to do it as an exposition? The way these Christians they needed uh, to know how to live uh, during that time when the when things were worse. Even us today, we require the same kind of lifestyle so that we may know on how to live at a certain and particular times, like the way Christ in, intends us to, to live. Uh, the, uh, this book of James, it does not touch anything concerning uh, the gospel of Christ Jesus. Again, it does not touch anything, as I said, the baptism and the Holy Communion. It, uh, and it does not touch anything concerning the theological aspect. This book of James does not talk anything concerning Jesus Christ himself. Why didn't he do this? At some point, uh, James, he, he, uh, some of the authors or the commentaries, those who have written commentaries, they say that James, at a point, he was opposing the ministry of Jesus Christ. Then later, he, he came to, uh, to be convinced again, and then he accepted the ministry of Jesus Christ. And in this book, we shall see it. We shall uh, 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 continue to dig deeper and we get to understand it. The book of James contains five chapters uh, that will guide us through and that which guides us we as the Christian. Uh, James uh, was writing to Christians uh, who are in Roman's empire. Uh, like 2,000 years ago, I don't know where you are by then, but that is the time when he wrote this book. Most of it is said it was one of the earliest books that were written during that time. And this was written after he was convicted and written it to the uh, Christians who were convicted after the Christians who were gathering in the synagogue during the time of uh, Balbanas and, and Paul. After they got convinced, this is the time now, this guy wrote this book and he wrote it to the Jewish who were were in Roman's empire and intended to demonstrate to them how they should uh, uh, live as Christians and how to succeed the practical aspect of it. In this book of James still, he wanted to show them that there are so many obstacles that they will meet on the way. There are so many temptations they will meet on the way, but he wanted to open the letter to them to guide them how they should live in a midst of all these challenges. Remembering that these people who he was writing this letter to, they were, they were not just the general audience. They were the born again Christians now who were now transformed and they received Christ Jesus. Remembering that in these Christians, they were encountering opposition from the general audience. And these general audience, they were the pagans now. They did not accept Christ. He also, there were the countrymen, the people in that, uh, in that nation. Also, the family men or the people from that uh, region or, or tribe they came from, the, Jew, the Jewish tribe. By then, they were like unique people and they were not like any other people. So that's why he was writing to them, showing them how to persevere, showing them how to guard themselves on the matters pertaining talking, showing them how to hone their faith, showing them how to act during the time of temptations, showing them what God loves, showing them how to stay with one another as Christians. And as from this aspect now, after now he opens the letter to these people, he shows them the practical 
aspect of it. And now, when we read the book of James, he starts this book in a very unique way, telling you that James was a unique man, a man of a unique character, and people knew him. Uh, James, he was a unique man. Because even the way he starts to authenticate the, the word, uh, the, his letter in James chapter 1, it brings us into an attention. Because he started by saying, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispensation greetings. You see, he started by saying, James, he does not specify which James or who James wrote this letter, meaning the people knew James who he was. I will come to show you in the scripture where he stood firm now and he stood uh, and show his character how he was. By this time, it, it shows us something. He was very unique and people knew him as a Christian. Now, when you read the New Testament, you tend to encounter four James in the Bible. Out of these four, one of them wrote this book of James. The first James that you will find is James, brother of John, the son of Zebedee. This is the first James that you will find. You will find this in the book of Acts chapter number 12. Acts chapter number 12. Uh, verse number chapter number 12 and verse number 2 that shows us uh, clearly the kind of gyms. Chapter number 12 and verse number 2. L let me first read the book of uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter number 4 and verse number 21. It says like this, and going from uh, hmm, 21 and going on from from there he saw two other brothers James the son of Zebedee and John his brother in the boat with Zebedee their father mending their nets and he called them immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him this was the first disciples of of, of Jesus that is James. But we'll come to see the end of James, the son of, of Zebedee, brother of John. In Acts chapter number 12 and verse number 2, it says, He killed James and uh, the brother of John with the sword. Meaning, at this time, from uh, uh, James in died, the brother of uh, John, the son of Zebedee. So now we can withdraw that James uh, in died uh, together with Peter. After they were in prison, then one of them, that is James, was killed. Then Peter was in prison. Then there is another James, the second James is the James, son of Alphaeus, the apostle. That is, we will find it in the book of uh, Matthew chapter number 10, verse number 3. And to this James, son of Alphaeus, his father had married Mary, who is assumed to have a relation uh, or a relationship with Jesus. That is, the, the woman that his father got married to they end a connection with the family of Jesus. That is blood connection. That is the second James, and we can withdraw him. Uh, let's get to Matthew chapter number 10 also, so that we can differentiate also. Chapter number 10 and verse number 3, it says, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the task collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thandias. So you can see there was another James, son of Alphaeus. Then there is another, the third James. 
James, the father of Judas, and not Judas Iscariot. This is not Judas Iscariot, but there was James, the father of Judas. That is James number three. And now we come to another James who wrote now the book of uh, James. That is James, the brother of Jesus, the brother of Joseph, the brother of June, is the one who wrote this book. That is, when we, we can see this in Matthew chapter number 13, verse number 55. Chapter number 13, verse 55. And it says like this, Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are, are not his brothers James, Joseph, Simon and Judas. So to this is the time when Jesus was rejected at Nazareth. And this is the first time when his brothers, they were a public pointed out, whereby their names were mentioned first. That is the sons of Mary and and Joseph. And at this point, we get to know that Jesus and other brothers and even sisters. At this point, James, he was the brother of Jesus. And he is the one who wrote this book. And we can see in the 21st century, his reputation was at peak. And, uh, we, and he was not an apostle. He did not subscribe to the ministry of Jesus the way other apostles did. I began by saying that he, he first uh, opposed the ministry of Jesus. Then he came to believe in this ministry later. Also, this James, he was a leader uh, of one of the church in Jerusalem. He was a leader in one of the church in, Jerus in Jerusalem. We can get it clearly in the book of Acts chapter number 15. I, I'm, I'm using these scriptures first to build my background that we may understand, understand the kind of gems that we are dealing with. Uh, chapter number 15, it talks about the Jerusalem council. And I want to deal with verse number 12 and verse number 13. And this is, and, and all the assembly fell silent, and they listened to Barnabas and Paul, as they related what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. Verse, verse 13. After they finished speaking, James... James, who was a leader in, Jer in Jerusalem now, the brother of Jesus, who wrote now the book of James, James replied, Brothers, listen to me. Simeon has uh, related how God first visited the Gentiles to take from them the people for his name. And with these, the ones of prophets agreed just as it is written. So he quoted how it was written. By this time, when Paul and Barnabas, they, they have spoken to the crowd about the signs and wonders they have done. Through, uh, the signs of wonders, signs and wonders that God has done through them. Then James, he stands up again. Now to speak to them. To tell them not to listen to him. What does that insinuate? This guy... And another command. And the Bible says, and the crowd, it was silent. And everyone listened to James. Meaning, James had a particular authority. And he had the command. That's why he was capable of commanding something. 
by telling them listen to me and they listen to him the whole crowd are uh, listening to him can you imagine uh, where you are commanding a crowd and the crowd listens to you can you ever imagine where you say after someone speaks who is bigger than you or possesses greater power than you and tells him uh, now listen to me and they listen to you this was the authority this guy had meaning his character uh, could not be compromised every compromised everybody knew who James was and his character was different and very unique John chapter number 7 verse number 3 at this point uh, I want now to show you how they intended to oppose now the ministry of Jesus John chapter number 7 verse 3 it says like this mm -hmm. so his brother sinned so he was among the brothers his brother said to him Live here and go to Judea, that your disciples also may see the works you are doing. For no one works in the secret if he seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers believed in him. <laughs> you hear? At one point, they did not believe in him. They did not believe in Jesus. So he was among the brothers who did not believe in Jesus at the first point. But later he came to believe in Jesus. Then after that, this guy also got married. He and the family and he got married. And when you read the book of Mark chapter number 3, verse 21. At this time, this guy, he was thrown down. After he was thrown down, uh, he did not die. But and by the Jews who opposed this kind of uh, Christianity that he was talking about. After they found that James had and, and not died, they decided now to public stone him the way they did to Stephen. They also did to James, the brother of Jesus because of the way he was talking about on matters pertaining Christianity and how Christians should, re, uh, should live in that uh, empire of Romans. Then someone is questioning why did I tend to choose this book of James? It is because this book of James is very simple to understand this book of James dwells on the practical aspect and not the theoretical aspect. Whereby it talks about the lifestyle of a Christian. In simple, this book cannot be outdated. This book cannot expire. The ones that are written there, every pastor should read. Every Christian should read. Every born again should read and know on how to carry themselves on this perverted and crooked world. That's number one. Number one. Number two, it contains uh, practical ideas in five chapters. Why do I call them practical ideas? When it talks about, uh, whereby it tells, listen more and talk less. It's a practical, you can do that. It's, when it tells you, um, a tongue is a small thing, so do this and that, you do that. Then it shows you on the sin of partiality how we can avoid. It's a practical, you can you can do that and then you avoid all these matters then the third thing it is uh, relevant to today's world wherever you are surrounded by materialistic immoral uh, uh, society that does not know or care about god indeed even in media in our TVs, whereby we see people are walking naked so that at least to earn the feminist and money. But you can earn money still when you are well clothed up. When you are well dressed up, you can still earn your money. So Yandos, all these things are the same uh, at the same time. So through that, those three uh, reasons, they made me to choose this book now that we may walk through during this season or this series 
of book of James. As I began, I began in the book uh, uh, by stating how James is stated this book. It begins in chapter 1 verse 1 by saying, James, uh, the servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispensation, greetings. Chapter, uh, verse number 2, he talks about now the testing of your faith. The testing of your faith. Uh, even in our times today, our faith is being tested uh, in different ways. Then he tells these uh, Christians or believers that, Count it joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces still fast. That shows us one thing. Even we today, and everyone can attest, in the world that we are living today, that it is full of temptations, it is full of challenges, it is full of trials, but it tells us not to count it joy. But you, ca you can't count it joy when you are, you are outside Christ Jesus. But if you are inside Christ Jesus, you can count it joy because your faith is alive. Because this faith produces stinging fast. And let the stinging fast have it full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So for you to be complete, you must first have faith. This faith completes you now as a Christian. Those who are, are not Christians, meaning they are incomplete. But those who are in, uh, they are Christians, they are complete because they have faith in Christ Jesus. Verse number five, very important to everyone. If anyone is in need of wisdom, imagine he's telling the Christians now, they are born again. He's telling them, if anyone is in need of wisdom, let him ask you from the Lord. Who gives this wisdom generously without any form of partiality or without any form of reproach? The Lord gives the wisdom to everyone, even you and me, and let desire to have this wisdom. Verse number six, then he talks about now, this wisdom that you are asking about, you should ask it by faith without doubting. Even as today, most of the Christians, what is making them to fall? Not that they are not praying. They are praying for particular issues, but they are praying when they are still doubting. How? For instance, when you are praying for a sick person, at the back of your mind you are saying, what if this person doesn't get ill? That is not your work. It is the work of God. But do the work that the Lord wants you to do, then healing belongs to God. The Lord will heal the person. So you should do this work by faith without doubting. Uh, for the one who doubt is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind, uh, for that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. So if you are doubting, you are like the waves of the sea. That is the waves of the, of the sea, they go just up. And you are like that, you should not receive anything from the Lord. You should not get anything from the Lord because you are, you are doubting and you are a double-minded man. You should not be a double-minded Christian. Then in verse, in verse number, number, number 9, let the lowering brothers boast and uh, exhortation and the rich in his humiliation because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. And in verse number 12, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under the tri trials. For when he has uh, stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. So for you to receive the, the crown of life, as James he tells the, the believers that you must fast endure and be steadfast with all kinds of trials that comes your way. 
Blessed are the men who are standing fast in the times of their trials. For at that time, when they overcome them, they will receive a crown of life. If you desire to receive this uh, crown of life, you must first be ready to be standing fast uh, under all the trials. Then we are, uh, it continues to say, which God has pro promised to those who love Him. This crown of life, Christ has promised all those who love Him. Not everyone will receive the crown of life. But only those who love Christ Jesus, they are the only to receive him. Verse number 13, very important that most of the Christians, they tend to misunderstood or misunderstand. It says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. Every time we receive temptations and we think that these temptations comes from the Lord. For God cannot tempt with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured uh, and enticed by his own desires. Meaning what? Our desires are the ones that rules us to get tempted. Uh, verse 15 then desires, excuse me, very important. Then desire, then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. Before you sin, then desires, they lend at you there. You, the desires will first uh, ring in your mind. That is in form of uh, lust. It will continue to ring your mind. Then you, you sin. And sin, when it is full and grown, brings forth death. So before you die, first, what comes in? Desires comes. Secondly, what follows it? It is what? It is now uh, the sin. After the sin, death. Verse number 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Every good and perfect gift is from from above coming down from the father of light with whom there is no variation on shadows due to change meaning what every gift that you have it comes from the father every perfect and good gift comes from the father not from man some of men have tried to adopt and come up with their own gift but now the scripture here tells us about now the perfect gift. The perfect gift that you have today comes from the Father. That's what the Bible says. Verse 18, of his own will, he brought us forth by the one of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Now, at this point, he has undoed one of the subtopics of the testing of faith in chapter number one and the handles it how our faith will be tested how we should react during the temptations what are the reward after now we overcome the temptations and now he has shown us that even the gift that we have they come from the Lord meaning that, meaning that they are not human built or human based or man based they are from God. They are spirit based. The Lord has sent them as given to us for free. And he wishes us the best through this gift. Then there is the, the last part of chapter number one. He talks about hearing and doing the word. This is very important. Here is whereby we have the front runners. We don't have the uh, second uh, runners. We have the front runners. Everyone wants to be earned. Everyone, the voice wants to be earned. But now here, James, he advises the Christians. He advises them. Verse 19. Know these, my beloved brothers. When he talks about the brothers, if these brothers are uh, 
they represent both genders, female and male. That's why he calls them brothers in plural. He tells them, let every person be quick to hear. He tells them, be quick first to hear. Then, quick, uh, slow to speak. No, uh, uh, slow to speak and slow to hunger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. At this time, meaning when you, you may be uh, quick to, uh, uh, when you are slow to speak and slow to anger, then you will have the righteousness of God. Also with quick to hear. Well, I think at this point it shows when you are quick to speak, you can lie to people. The people who speak a lot, they lie a lot. And it is true. Some of people who speak a lot, they lie a lot. But those who are slow, they are very factual. They give a factual information. That's what he tells them. Evidential information with a, a particular re a reference whereby they can cite. If it is the scripture, they cannot misquote the scripture. But rather they will reference the scripture. At that point, that's what he tells them. Don't be ready to speak in public anyhow, because you may mislead the flock. You should be quick to listen, slow to anger, and even slow to speak. You should not speak anywhere. Even the men of God, by the way, men of God, not everywhere that you should speak. Our oh, pastors, not everywhere that you should speak. But the right places that way you should speak and at the right time when you are needed. Verse 21. Therefore put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness and implanted one which is able to save your son. If you remember, I seen uh, the, in the tribes that they were in, it was full of pagans. Uh, the society that were there, they were so immoral, materialistic. Now he tells them here clearly that the, the society is full of uh, rampant wickedness and uh, they should live the way Christ wants by being meek putting away filthiness, and they should stick to the word of God, which is able to save their thoughts, even us today. That is the main point also for us Christians. Let's put away the filthiness and be humble and stick to the word of God. And then we shall be able to save our souls and the souls of others. Verse number 22, but be doers of the word. What does that say? We do, uh, the, he was telling them to do the way the scripture says. Not mending, no, not changing anything concerning the scripture. If it says the turn right, go right, not left. That's what he says. But he gives uh, uh, an example with a man. I don't know the reason why he did not use a female. And females are the people who use mirror more, uh, more often than men. But here he uses a very good example with a man. He says that, but, in the, uh, but being doers of the one and not hearers, only deceiving yourself. For if anyone is ear of the one and not undoer, he is uh, like a man. Listen, here he does not call him brother, but he specifies a man who looks himself intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away. At once he forgets what he was like. He tells them that how they have read the word and how the word says. If the word says, be slow to quick, to speak, be slow to hunger, and then even be slow uh, to other matters in on public uh, domains. If it tells them, humble yourself 
he tells them now stick to that don't be just earless don't just sit and listen and walk out saying and the message was powerful and the man of God was anointed he tells them what you have had now go and do that that is what he meant by telling them be doers but those who does not uh, do he, he uses an example with a man who looks himself in a mirror on a mirror on a mirror and then he walks away forget how he was and uh, you can think of forgetting your own face how you were uh, after you you look yourself on a mirror. So same to us Christians. We should hear the word of God, stick to this word, and also be the doers of this word. Verse 25. But the one who, who but the one who looks uh, into the perfect law, the law of uh, liberty and perseverance, being no uh, no hearer who forget but doer who act, he will bless, he will be blessed in his doing. If you are a doer, you shall be blessed, but if you are hearer, you shall not be blessed. That's what the Bible implies here. If anyone thinks he is a uh, Lelentious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person, person's religion is worthless. By this, you know, there's uh, people who show themselves earlier than thou. These are the kinds of people that that uh, James tries to to talk about here. That is, you want to show that you are ever perfect. But he tells them, even there is no one who can't bridle his own tongue. By this, he tells them to live a lifestyle that is worthy of Christ Jesus himself. Not just by saying, being a religious person in the hour, but rather be a dweller of this world. Verse 27, a religion that is pure and undefiled before God is, the, uh, is this, to visit the orphans and the windows in the afflictions and to keep oneself unstained from the world. You can hear? So, it implies also, with the Christians, we also have the mandate that we need to fulfill as we stick and stick to our religions. The religions is not the Hinduism, the Catholics, or any forms of denomination, the Christianity, and all other that, the artist, and all that. But rather, it tells us that we have an obligation to work upon and to act upon that is going to the orphans and also visiting uh, the windows with the Christians. It reminds them indirect. That's why I told you this is a proverbial, proverbial book. That is the wisdom is kind of hidden inside. And we should know that we the Christians, we have a mandate to fulfill and we deserve to, be, to live and submit to God's will and be patient in everything. And we renders we should li uh, live authentically and wisely as Christ himself intends us to live. This book was written by James, the brother of Jesus himself. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Let's continue next Wednesday. I will continue the chapter number two and chapter number three. This one I will get deeper so that we may get to understand now the things that he knows and tells us with the Christians to do. Do not forget to like, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Be blessed.